Hi, what I'm going to do here is give you a brief introduction to developing a consuming application for SData feeds. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to be using something called the Sage Integration Framework to make my life a lot easier. Um, the Sage Integration Framework, or SIF for short, is a .NET implementation of the SData standard. You can download both the source code and the installable version of the SIF from the GitHub repository. I'll provide a link at the end of the video. Um, for full details on the SData standard itself, you can get that from sdata.sage.com. Again, I'll, I'll put, post a link at the end of the video. Um, the SIF is also installed with a number of Sage applications. For the purposes of the demo today, I'll be using Sage 50 Counts 2012 version as the provider. If you are interested in learning more about uh, creating a provider, uh, providing SData feeds, then there are another series of videos um, on that subject, and again, I'll have links at the end of the video for, for that for anybody who's interested. Um, what I've got on this machine here at the moment has got um, Visual Studio 2010 Professional Edition. Um, to follow through this demo, you don't need uh, the Professional Edition. You can uh, use the Express Edition should you, uh, should you have that available, or even earlier versions of Visual Studio as well. Uh, I have also installed um, a helper tool, um, a plugin for Visual Studio, um, which we'll be using. Again, I'll have a link uh, to where you can download that at the end of the video. So, we'll get started. So, I'm just going to create a new. Um, I'm going to create a new project here. Uh, I'll create a console uh, application. I'll just keep things nice and simple. We don't need anything particularly complex. Um, I'll just open up uh, Solution Explorer here first of all. <clears throat> what I'll do firstly is I'm going to right click on the project and we'll see this item here, Add SData Reference. So this is the pro um, provided by the uh, plugin that I mentioned earlier on. So you'll only see that if you've actually installed the, the plugin. If you've just installed this, the SIF, you won't see that. Um, all this will really do, though, is generate us a lot of boilerplate code to, that we would otherwise have to type ourselves. So it's, it's a nice little labor-saving device, to, and it's, I'd certainly recommend that you download and install it if you're going to be developing SData feeds. So if I click on Add SData Reference, it will start up a little wizard. So just click Next. So what I need to do here is give it a name and at least one path to a schema file. Uh, for the name, I'll just, I'm just going to call it GCRM. A GCRM, Global CRM Contract. Um, this is a, a well-known and well-defined contract. It's been in use in a number of Sage applications for a number of years now. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm using it for the demo. Um, you can actually call this anything you like, it doesn't really make any difference. I'm just going to call it GCRM here just to remind me what it is. Um, and then we can either give it a path to a local schema file, so an XSD file that you have stored uh, on your hard drive, or we can give it the path to a URL which, is in, which a provider has uh, given us. So I'm just going to use that second option here, I'm just going to paste it in. As you can see there, it's uh, we're going to the local machine to the S data endpoint for accounts 50 GCRM, and we're getting the we're make, issuing a dollar schema request. Um, you can actually view that in a web browser if you want to have a look. And all it actually does is returns an XSD file, the same thing that you might have had stored locally on your on your hard drive. Um, so if I click finish there, it will try and connect to that. Um, so it will need me to log on. So I'll just provide the, the default credentials. And what it's doing here is it's going off and reading that schema file um, and it's generating, as we can see, a lot uh, a lot of uh, boilerplate code here for us. So in addition to the uh, the classes that it's generated, it's also made added a, f a number of references, as we can see here, in the Solution Explorer. So you can see it makes a reference to Sage Common Syndication, Sage Integration Client, Sage Integration Server Model, and Sage, in and Sage Utilities. And they are all uh, assemblies which are part of the SIF and will be installed uh, into the Global Assembly Cache. And for uh, ease of uh, adding a reference to yourself, if you're not using the um, 
Visual Studio plugin. They're also installed to C program files, Sage assemblies, S data. Um, but if you're using the Visual Studio plugin, it's all automated. You don't really need to worry about that. So here we can see we've got a folder called S data references. We've then got within that a folder called GCM. That's what I called the, the S data reference that I added. Um, and then within here we have the generated files and just a reminder not to, to modify them. As you can see here we've got quite a lot, quite a lot of classes. These are all um, different types which have been defined in the GCM contract. In, in this particular instance, the, uh, it's the instance schema of Sage Accounts 50 um, that has uh, got, got these definitions in there. And if I just open up one of these, we'll just have a look at bank account. Um, I'll just give us a bit more room here. Um, what we can see, we've got a, a public class here bank, called Bank Account Feed Entry Schema. Um, that inherits from this class feed entry, which is in the Sage Common uh, Syndication namespace. Feed entry is a, a base class defined in the SIF, uh, and you'll find that all of the, the classes here are, are exactly the same. They all inherit from feed entry, and you'll find later on when we uh, when we use the SIF to make requests to the S data feeds that we are using generics, and when we're doing that, every everything that we use must de derive from fe a feed entry or a feed, and I'll show you the, the feed class in just a moment. Um, if we just expand the properties, you want to scroll down a little bit just so you can see it. What we can see here is a lot, there's a lot of properties defined and there's a lot of metadata for each of those properties, um, including uh, the label, whether it's, whether it's nullable, um, what namespace it's in, so on and so forth. The properties themselves and that metadata has come directly from the schema. This has all just been generated. Um, you don't really need to worry much about this at all. It's just just so I uh, show you here for information uh, to see what you what you're actually getting. Um, we'll just deal with these as a as an object. Uh, so we'll just create a, a new instance of a, a bank account and we'll use the name property and the reference property and so on. And you'll see that in, in just a moment. So there's there's no there's no implementation in here. They are very very simple classes. Um, literally just every property of every type which is defined in the schema has been gen code generated here. If we pop back to Solution Explorer, um, I'm just collapse up the the feed, um, and what you'll also see here now is that we have a feeds folder as well, and in there we've got exactly the same types which are defined in there, but these are the feeds. So a feed entry is a single instance um, of the resource, and a feed is, the, is a collection. So if we go and have a look at the, what's been generated here, you can see this is even simpler. Um, and you can see the generics at play here, actually. Um, we have a public class called bank account feed, and that derives from Sage Common Syndication feed of type bank account feed entry. So that's the bank account feed entry class that we created before, yeah, sorry, that we, that we looked at before. Um, so as I say, that's all boilerplate code, you don't really need to, to worry about it. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick um, demo there of what was being generated for us. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of classes and a lot, a lot of useful stuff in, in there, but we'll just be using them as objects, as I say, so you don't really need to worry about them. Um, the other thing which the uh, the Visual Studio to, uh, plugin does do for us as well is to create us uh, a little sample class here, um, just to demonstrate how you could make a request. So we could just call this class directly and call the, the get, or we could call the get feed method of this class, uh, and it would execute um, and return. The list of bank accounts from the consuming application, from the providing application. Sorry, um, in this case, accounts 50. So it would go to this endpoint, um, make that request. It would deserialize the, uh, the those back into um, bank account feed entries, and then we'll just iterate over the collection and and output them. And I'll, I'll show I'll sh I'll show you from scratch um, how to how to do this. So I'll just close some of this down. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the demo because I don't need that. We'll, we'll be creating it from scratch. 
Um, but what I will need to do, if I'll just go into the properties of the, the console application, I'm going to change it to use the full framework. Um, we will need to do that, uh, unfortunately. So, we'll go back to our console app. So, all we've got, all we've done is we've generated a lot of boilerplate code at this uh, at this point. So, what we want to do first of all is start making a request for some data. So, um, here I'm, I'll use uh, trading accounts because um, they're a, they're a good good example of um, of a, a rich object. Trading accounts are in accounts 50 terminology would be both customers and suppliers. Uh, in terms of the GCRM contract, it's it's the it's the generic term which covers both of those types of, of information. So I'm going to do set up a get request here. So that's I'm going to go off to to accounts and say please give me all, all of the trading accounts that you that you have there. So first thing we'll do here is I'm going to create an S data URI. <clears throat> Oops. This data. And that's in the Sage Common Syndication namespace. Uh, let me just new that up. And I'm going to call a, a helper method on that called build local path. Now, in the uh, in the hard coded sample that we saw generated before, you saw there was a, a URL, so just literally the, the full the full string. Um, now, there's a lot of configuration information which might change. So it might not be that uh, that string by default. You might uh, might be running on a different port. You might have um, SSL enabled, um, so you're going through HTTPS. Um, so you can't rely on a hard-coded path always being uh, being correct. Uh, you, yeah, there's various bits of information which do need to be discovered, um, even down to the, to the local machine name. Using local host uh, is fine for demo purposes, but d doing it for um, in a real-world scenario is never a good idea. Um, so what I'm going to do here is call this build local path help a method, and this will. Um, go off and build that URL for me. It'll get me to the same string as we saw before in this particular example, but it would actually re it does actually read the configuration information, and should that be different, I would, the URL that I end up with would take all of that into account, and I don't really need to worry about it. The only thing I need to, to, uh, to do here is tell it the, the very basic information that um, of what I want to connect to. So this takes a, an array of strings as a, it's a parameter, so we're going to be connecting to the account 50 adapter. In there we're going to be connecting and using the GCRM contract. And within there we're going to go off and get the default data set. Now, you should pause at this point and just point out here the, uh, the default data set identifier there, which is a dash. Again, this is something which is fine for demo purposes, but in a real, real world scenario, I would not use this here. I would, it's definitely something I would go off and discover, or I would have a bit of UI which the user chooses a particular data set. Um, the problem with the default data set, or the, the thing which can trip you up, is that it can change. It's just the, in, in terms of the accounts 50, it's just the very first. Uh, d uh, data set in the list and should you add others and delete the one that you had then you could be talking to a different endpoint so it's just something to watch out for fine as I say fine for demo purposes but normally you would use the the full GUID in there which would uniquely identify the data set and within the data set when we get there as I say I'm going to be using trading accounts um, so I'm going to go to the trading accounts collection so what that will have done is basically internally built up uh, that U a URL, so HTTP colon slash localhost colon 5493 slash accounts 50 slash DCM slash dash slash trading account. Um, but I didn't have to worry about getting all that configuration information. Um, so now that I've got a, a URI, URI that I can use, I want to um, I want to go and hit that URL and. Uh, retrieve data. So to do that, I'm going to create a, a, an S data request. S data request. 
that's in the Sage integration client namespace, so I'm just going to import that namespace. Um, again, this is a uh, this is defined in the SIF, and this wraps up all of the, all of the different types of requests you can make. Every single one uh, can be made through an SData request object. Just I'm just going to call that request. I'm just going to call the new SDA request. So I'm going to cut new it up, and what I'm going to pass into that request is the URI from the SDA URI that I previously generated. So I'll get the URI property from it. Um, that's all I need to pass into that. And then I'm going to set the username and password property. So when you're connecting to S data feeds invariably there will be um, locked down in some manner depending on the particular implement implementation so you will very typically have to authenticate against it they're not just uh, open to anybody to be able to go and hit you have to be able, you have to log on you have to authenticate and you'll authenticate typically as the application user so in here as we're to going to be talking to CH50 accounts we're going to log on with the default Username and password, which is manager and, uh, zero and no password. So that's our request ready to go. So what we're going to do is say, go, uh, request a list of trading accounts. So we're, go we're going to get a list of trading accounts back from this request. So we need an object to, to contain that. So. So create an instance of a trading account feed, a collection of trading accounts. Now this is one of the, the uh, boilerplate classes that we generated before. That's in the um, TRM ERP X uh, 2008 feeds namespace. That namespace is generated from the from the schema. I should should point out there. Um, so we'll just call that account, <coughs> and we'll just new it up. So this is going to contain our collection. So all we'll do is we'll just say request request feed, and that's generic. Um, I'm going to get it for trading account feed entry. So what we want, so we're going to go and hit the URL that we built before. We're requesting, uh, oops, sorry, trading account, my mistake. Trading account feed entry, and the parameter we're going to pass into that is the trading account feed, the collection that we uh, created earlier there. And then all we do is call request dot send, and that will go off and hit that endpoint. It will read the request. It will authenticate because we've given it a username and password. Um, it will populate that account. Um, variable that we, we created there, that collection, with the list of trading accounts, with the results uh, of what, we, what we're going into, uh, or what has been returned by accounts there. <clears throat> so, all we'll do here now is say, um, sorry, say, if the request is, if the request is status valid for verb, so we're just doing a very basic check just to make sure that everything was okay. Um, I'll show you later on in the demo how you can get um, more information if, if things do go wrong and how you can actually handle handle those situations. Um, here it's just a very simple Boolean flag which is just telling us did we get the expected result. The expected result varies depending on the um, the request type that you're making, whether you're doing a get request, a put request, a, uh, a, uh, a post, etc. For, so here we uh, we could have got uh, a 404 example, for example. Um, so as a uh, file not found, in this case it would be a 200 uh, OK request that we would actually get returned. So <clears throat> we just do that very basic check, and now that we've got that, we will just say. Um, which do a for each, um, and it's going to be for each trading account feed entry in, in accounts. 
and all we'll do here is we'll just um, output it to the, to the console string format here just and that's account and these are all the properties that again this comes from the boilerplate code as you see we're just using the uh, using these objects here um, We'll just put a little pause in there. Um, so if we now uh, run this, we'll go and build it and we get an error. What did I miss? Sorry, it's the entries collection um, that we need to be iterating over here. So I'll just run this, that will build. <coughs> uh, it'll go off now and it'll hit the feed. There's the and uh, there'll be a, a slight delay as we, as we actually uh, build this information, but here, if you're familiar with uh, Stage 50 accounts, you'll recognize some of the names here that were um, of the customers and suppliers which are in there. So that's got us our list of trading accounts in there. There was any key to, to come out of that. So that's getting information. It's as simple as that, a handful of lines of code. Getting other types of information um, would literally be a change to the types that we use here, the trading account feed and the actual endpoint that we, we go to. Now, what I've done here is actually um, something which wouldn't be considered particularly good practice. I've just gone off and got everything. Now, in, a, in this particular case, we're using the demo data for Sage 50 accounts, and there's not very much data in it, but there's only, uh, I think it's 45 trading accounts in there, which isn't very much at all. But there could be thousands, tens of thousands uh, of records uh, in, your, uh, in your endpoint that when you go and hit it. And you don't necessarily want the overhead of going off and getting all of those records at, at once. Uh, you want to normally do some sort of, some form of paging. And we get just enough records to um, fill a screen for display, uh, and you only get the next ones as, uh, as and when you need it. So, normally, what we'd do um, for that is we'd actually just get uh, from from a certain number of records to a certain number, uh, and we'll get the the count of those. So, here, what I could do is I could just quickly change this to say, uh, sorry, UI dot count and we're going to set that to, to, to 10 records um, and I can set the uh, start index oops, start index to 10 as well um, so what, what that's saying is that we're going to go to um, we're going to go 10 records in and we're going to get the next 10 records from there so if I run that again We can see we're getting a much smaller list. We've only, it was much quicker to, to return the, the data. We didn't have to, to go off and um, build a big long list. Um, so typically in a real world situation, you would get them in page sizes. The actual page size that you use would really be dependent on um, the endpoint that you're requesting and what you're going to do with them um, when you actually retrieve them. Um, you know, if you've got a, a screen which only displays, you know, five items, then it's you know they only go off and get five items. If you've got a dis one which displays fifty items, then go off and get the, all fifty. It just, you know, it's really down to your implementation, and it's it's sort of a um, very touchy feely sort of thing as to how you would decide how how you'd get to a point of uh, deciding how many you would get in a page. Um, um, Everything here that you, you've seen will work on any, re, any other resource kind. It's literally the difference is with the trading account feed entry. Um, that would just be, um, you know, a, a invoice feed entry, a, sorry, a sales invoice feed entry. It could be a, a purchase order feed entry, so on and so forth. There's anything which is supported by the adapter. All of those types were generated as boilerplate code. Um, we didn't have to rewrite them, we just had to write a handful of lines of code 
to, to do our particular uh, requested operation. Um, it's all very similar code that you, uh, as you'll have seen if you followed through the, the examples. So that's getting information and very simple, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> so once, once we get something, we're going to want to um, do something with that. So we're going to want to make some changes um, so we'll go off and get it. We might want to go off and get a trading account, and we'll actually make a change to that trading account, um, update the name, update the address, so on and so forth.